Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at a creative way to evaluate certain trigonometric integrals. Now, this example, which is a product of two cosine functions, but their inputs are different. The standard way to evaluate this, usually advocated in a Calculus 2 course, is just to make use of your appropriate identities. And here are the ones that you're probably told to use are the product to some identities. Now that's nice and great and all, but you actually have to know those identities. And I'll tell you as a mathematics professor, even I don't memorize these identities. The way that the pros do it, we're gonna do it with Euler's formula. Now technically, Euler's formula is the first one. We're gonna be using the related identities, but close enough. So what we're going to do essentially is bypass this. This is much easier to memorize as well as these, and you're likely gonna be using them in what comes beyond your Calc 2 course in some advanced science, engineering, and mathematics courses. So you might be already familiar with these. We're just gonna find, instead of plugging in here, much easier just to go through a little bit of algebra using these related identities to Euler's formula. So let's start by rewriting our function, replacing each cosine term with the appropriate version in terms of complex exponentials. Now, if you're not comfortable with the replacements, just make sure you realize here, the formula is stated with x, but you can replace x with 2x and then separately with 4x. So let's go ahead and do that here, just rewriting it. Cosine of 2x times cosine of 4x. And we're gonna use this identity twice, once for each cosine term. So we get 1 half e to the 2ix plus e to the negative 2ix. And we apply that identity again to the cosine of 4x term, giving another factor of a half, but now e to the 4ix plus e to the negative 4ix. From here, it's just basic algebra multiplying out those two sets of parentheses. And just make sure you're comfortable when you multiply exponentials of the same base, you can add their exponents. So let's pull the factors of a half out front. We'll write them both as 1 fourth. And if we go ahead and multiply here, we'll get e to the 6ix. Your last term looks like it's gonna come out to e to the negative 2ix. All right, your inners here, it looks like you're going to get e to the positive 2ix. And then your last terms, looks like you'll get e to the negative 6ix. And if you are familiar with your identities, you can see we're gonna group two of these together. You always have, for the cosine identity, an exponential to the i and a similar exponential to the negative i. The factors can be different here, six and two x, but we'll group the six i x terms together and the two i x terms together. So let me just rearrange these. I'll keep the one fourth out front. I'll move these together, just put them right next to each other, e to the six i x plus e to the negative six i x. And these are already together. If you want, switch the order, since the identity here has the positive exponent before the negative exponent. Technically, it doesn't matter, but since many of you are maybe coming out of your Calc 2 course, I'll just include those steps. So write that as e to the 2ix plus e to the negative 2ix. And in order to get exactly cosine or sine here, we need to account for those factors there of a half. So just pull off 
one factor of a half out of the one fourth and distribute that in. And we are basically done with the rewriting. And notice I'm taking that factor of a half and I'm gonna multiply it to each set of terms, grouping the six ix terms and two ix terms together. So the last two, we get another plus one half, e to the two ix plus e to the negative two ix. And now both those terms fit exactly our cosine identity. So it looks like we can rewrite this as one half. This part's gonna come out to cosine of six x. And this part, that's gonna come out to cosine of two x. All right, now that is the same end result of what you would get by applying the first cosine times cosine product to some identity. But again, you have to memorize that. Instead of memorizing that formula, much easier to memorize these. They're a lot simpler. And with practice, this work can go really quick. Now, keep in mind here, the goal was to integrate. And now we have a result that is gonna be very easy to integrate. Now, I just wanna caution you with a check to make sure your work's gonna be consistent. We're starting with real numbers here or functions of real numbers. And you should get as your answer for an antiderivative functions of real numbers. And notice here at the end, even though we're using exponentials in terms of uh, factors of i, notice they all work themselves out to disappear or combine together to give you only a real end result. There's no factors of i left over in there, which is what you want. If there were a factor of i left over, it can probably be attributed to some sort of minor error in the work above. All right, with this, let's go ahead and now integrate. I'm gonna replace my function with this, uh, this identity, one half times cosine of six x, and then plus cosine of two x. And this will be very easy to integrate. Your basic antiderivatives for cosine will be sine, and due to substitution, each of those antiderivatives will give you factors of one sixth and one half respectively. So it looks like we get our antiderivative pretty easily. We have the factor of one half out front, and we get a one over six times sine of six x, and then plus one over two sine of two x. And don't forget the plus c. You can rewrite this if you want, distribute that one half, and you can get a final end result, one over 12 sine of six x plus one over four sine of two x plus c. And that is a really nice alternate method to just brute force memorization of boring identities. That's a lot more fun and pretty cool in my opinion. Hopefully you enjoyed this video in our series, The Art of Integration. If you enjoyed the content, support the channel, hit the subscribe button.